Let's start with opposition leader Peter Dutt and calling on the Prime Minister to refer himself to the National Anti-Corruption Commission over the free Qantas flight upgrades he solicited. And he also questioned whether Albanese's relationship with Qantas and Alan Joyce, the former CEO, may have influenced his government's decision to stop Qatar Airways from running additional Australian flights. The question remains, did Anthony Albanese, as Minister for Transport, breach the Ministerial Code of Conduct? Well, certainly on the face of uh, reading the uh, Gillard Government uh, Ministerial Code of Conduct, the Prime Minister has breached that by his own admission. I think it's a matter that should be referred by the Prime Minister. I think the Prime Minister should take the initiative to refer this matter to the Integrity Commission because I think there are lots of questions about Mr Albanese's credibility and his integrity in relation to the Qatar decision. Joining me now for more on this is Sky News contributor Prue McSween. Prue, the Qatar decision may come back to haunt Anthony Albanese. It was a decision that was hugely beneficial for Qantas, but you can make the argument it hurt Australian travellers who are paying more for airfares in part due to the lack of competition. Well, Rita, that's what mateship's all about. You scratch each other's backs and you look after each other and, you know, who cares if the, the travelling public's going to pay more? Look, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that he's on thin ice, that the Prime Minister has, on the face of it, breached the code of standards. You know, 3.18 clearly says you cannot solicit, uh, you know, benefits for yourself mm. or your family. And uh, one would expect that that will come out eventually. Uh, he's lost all authority, and that's his problem now. There's no credibility. There's even memes going around. Can we upgrade our PM? You know, they've already hit the ground. He's uh, he, he once actually accused Scott Morrison of being tarnished by his own hubris. Well... <laughs> We're looking at that right now with this Prime Minister. He's he's compromised his position, he's compromised the travelling public, and frankly, he should, I believe, if he's going to survive this, report himself to the NACC. He needs to come clean and either fall on his sword, if it's proven that he has breached the code, or at least show that he's a man. You know, man up. Stop trying to obfuscate and, and worm your way out of it. You're just looking ridiculous. Pro, you're so right. It shows a sense of entitlement here from the Prime Minister and it challenges this entire brand he's built around himself of being this down-to-earth, relatable man who uh, grew up in public housing and understands the concerns of everyday Australians uh, dealing with cost of living crisis, dealing with a housing crisis. And then in the space of two weeks, Peru, we've had him buy a beach house for over $4 million, not very relatable. And now this, and, and this is arguably far worse because at least the beach house was his own money. This mm. is him benefiting from freebies thanks to his position. Well, it's talking to his poor judgment too. You know, is he that out of touch now? and so uh, enamoured of his role that he thinks he can get away with these things. You know, it's just, he clearly is not taking any advice. Uh, and if he is, maybe it's from Chalmers who's after his job because this is a good way for Chalmers to be <laughs> marching into the PM role. You know, I, I really can't help but feel that Albanese won't recover from this. I think he's a dead man walking when it comes to being PM or, in fact, being re-elected uh, under the Labor Party. So, uh, you know, there's a lot more to play in this and the uh, Libs are not going to let it go away. He's tried to distract it with the, you know, bringing the uh, COVID report out a couple of days earlier. He thinks, nothing to see here, look over here. We're not that stupid. We're not going to let this go and he's going to be accountable. Mm. Now, the Victorian government's war against property investors continues. Not only have they hiked up land tax, imposed a raft of onerous conditions on landlords and stripped away property owners' rights, and that is set to intensify further, Prue, with six fresh reforms that set to be written into law over the next 12 months. Landlords will lose the right to choose who lives in their properties, essentially. They can't just evict tenants 
unless they have damaged property, failed to pay rent, or if the owner needs somewhere to live and has to move back. You can't just choose who's going to live in your property, which seems incredible to me. Um, they will also be banned from uh, having tenants uh, pay penalties for breaking their lease. Uh, the, the maximum a tenant will have to pay is four weeks rent, even if they break a 12-week or 12-month uh, rental agreement. Mm. Uh, all of these measures, Prue, just add up to making it less attractive for mum and dad investors to enter the property market in Victoria. And it means the pool of rental properties is going to shrink further and push up rent. So though this is supposed to help renters, I think in the end it's going to hurt them. Well, it really is. You know, who would be an investor in Victoria now? You know, you, it's the mm. politics of envy. And you have this ridiculous claim that they're going to build more houses. Well, maybe the intention is, but where is everybody going to rent in the interim while this goes on? Uh, and frankly, with the CFMEU uh, running riot down there and everywhere, you know, it, we will see if those houses get built. But why would anyone invest when you think that a lot of the people who are investors are just ordinary mum and dads, Australians who've worked hard, either tradies who've got their own business, who just want to, or school teachers, people who just want a little nest egg when they retire. They're not these, you know, diehard lethal landlords who are there to screw over the tenant. You know, I have investment properties and you know, the tenants that look after them, you love them. You don't want to lose those people. Uh, the last thing you do is treat them with contempt. But in this case, you know, Victoria, I think, was leading the way where investment properties. You're going to be one of the last um, states, I believe, that will uh, have people wanting to park their money there. It's too risky. Oh. Absolutely. And there are buyers advocates, leading buyers advocates who have uh, told their clients do not invest in Victoria no. because uh, uh, this war against property investors, it's a real thing. Uh, and there is a reason why so many are selling up at, and it's really putting a strain on the rental market. And, mm -hmm. the, and you feel sorry for the renters who have no option but to rent when there's not that many properties left to rent, That's the prices right. go up. Now, let's talk about the ABC. The uh, 2024 annual report has just been released and the public broadcaster spent a record amount, $1.13 in taxpayer funds over the last financial year. The government is budgeting for them to spend even more this financial year, despite the fact that their audience is plummeting through... Uh, and I do wonder where the accountability is here. The ABC only generated around $100 million in revenue last year. Well, what's our ROI? You know, and whenever you're investing in anything, you have to think, what is my return? And frankly, as one of the people paying for the ABC activists, you know, I, I want my money back. You know, we have this situation where... You know, they're saying that they've done a lot of job cuts and, frankly, a lot of those people you wouldn't feed, let alone put near a microphone. But they must be running out of activist journalists to actually employ because, you know, it's just ridiculous that you have this situation where the national broadcaster is so predictable, not reflecting what Australians want to see and hear, losing audiences like crazy, and we keep throwing money at them. There is no accountability, clearly, and governments, consecutive governments, of the Libs as well, have not had the guts to say, OK, we're going to, you know, sell you off, privatise you, or you can be and you can become a streaming service. Prue McSween, thanks for your time tonight.